Hi, Stamper fans. Welcome to another Make It Monday. I am Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois, and I am here live on my Facebook page every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time in the U.S. So uh, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me on replay, I'm so glad that you've taken some time out of your day to um, join me. I hope you get some tips and trip tips and tricks and maybe some speaking lessons <laughs> from me. Um, yeah, my goal every Monday is to just kind of teach you something new or remind you of something you forgot maybe. Um, tonight we're gonna be working on our uh, latest paper pumpkin kit. Hello, hello, Penny, welcome. Um, if you are joining me live, like my dear Penny, go ahead and drop a comment in the box, in the comment box, because I'd love to see who's there that I can chat with. So um, let's go ahead and flip the, not flip, just change the view. Okay, so you already have a question. Shoot, what's your question, Betty? <laughs> That's good, I'm glad you have questions. <laughs> so I'm gonna get started. Go ahead, type your question in the box or we can chat afterwards, whichever is easier for you. Um, and I will answer it if you if you pop it in there. So so tonight we are going to do the October paper pumpkin, which is home for the holidays. And I'm going to be assembling it tonight per the instructions. Um, and then next week we're gonna switch it up and I have a little something new for you. And then the week following, I'm gonna show you some alternatives you can do with this kit, all right? So um, before we get started on that, I wanna thank all of you for voting for Friday Night Stamping. Um, hang on just a minute. <laughs> um, ah, okay. So here's an interesting question. So Betty recently signed up as a demonstrator. So she gets, um, uh, access to a demonstrator only kind of side of things. And, um, not sure if that's what you're talking about or if you're talking about a public video that you saw. But anyway, the um, I haven't watched the one you're talking about, but if she was wiping something like a rosin bag, did she emboss afterwards, heat emboss? Because that's usually, we have an embossing buddy that looks kind of like a rosin bag um, and it takes the static off the paper so that when you stamp in your Versamark and then you put the embossing powder on the paper, it doesn't stick all over, it just sticks to that Versamark ink. So that's what that little kind of rosin bag thing is meant for. Was that what she was doing, heat embossing? I'm assuming so. That's it, gotcha, okay, good. Yay, I had an answer. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who are not aware, my husband and I, the Stamper Man, Russ, uh, we come down to the craft studio every Friday night and we each make a card and then I put it on Facebook for all the people to vote on which one they like better that week. And it's not to say that one of them's bad, it's just which their preference is. And then on Monday, I reveal who made the winning card. So this week, this card is the one that won, and this was my entry this week. Woohoo! So it's good, because he was on a roll, so I needed a win. But I also wanted to show you um, on his card something cool. So he used the One Horse Open Sleigh designer paper, and that's this tree print here. But also, if I can catch it, he actually used the little dotted stamp and um, embossed it in white. So it looks like it's snowing on top of the trees. There, you can kind of see that. So he did that over the pattern that was already there, which I thought was really, really cool. And then, of course, our nested essentials dies, which are essential. <laughs> so always a good there. And I love how he layered those. So um, this is our trucking along uh, bundle that I used because these little guys are punched out, even though I did adhere them flat again. So I could just have, you know, stamped on the cardstock, I guess. But then again, this is nice because if you make a mistake, you can just stamp another one and punch it out. But then I colored in with, in with the blends and then I actually did a little bit of Wink of Stella on like the fenders and right under the door. So kind of cool there. Alrighty, so I just wanted to show you those since we won't be making either one of those cards tonight. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about them. So paper pumpkin, love my paper pumpkin. Every month this crafting kit comes to my door. Well, it comes to my mailbox. I have to go to the mailbox, but that's not bad. <laughs> it's a lot better than all the bills that are in there and all the garbage junk mail, right? So, um, but this paper pumpkin kit comes to my mailbox every month and it's just a fun pre-planned box of goodies. So the projects are all pre-planned, pre-cut, uh, pre-scored, everything's pre. <laughs> it's fabulous. Um, and it comes always with a stamp set, an exclusive stamp set that you can't get anywhere else, and a little ink spot. And they don't repeat an ink spot color in a 12-month period. So if you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you'll notice that your ink collection has been growing, which is lovely, because then you have all these different color inks to play around with. And I always tell people if you're starting out and you're not sure like which inks to buy or things like that, man, if you start building these Paper Pumpkin um, little ink spots, then the ones you grab all the time, those are the ones you want to get the big ink pad for first. So. Alrighty, your very first paper pumpkin kit will also come with an acrylic block to put your stamps on. So this is the only block you'll ever need for all of your paper pumpkin kits because they do design all of the stamp sets so that they can be used on the same size block. So very nice. So if you just have all of your stuff in one spot and you have this block, you're all good to go. Your paper pumpkin kit comes with everything you need, including adhesive. You might need a little a pair of scissors, but pretty much every house has a pair of scissors, even if it's kindergarten ones, right? So, <laughs> um, so I've pulled out the stuff we will need to make one of each of these because you get to make eight cards with this particular kit and um, for each of two different designs. So I'm gonna make one of each design. Now, this kit already has the deadline for subscribing to it has passed just in case there's new viewers. I want to make sure not to confuse anybody. Um, but you can always, once you sign up to be a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you can um, purchase past kits or refills as they are available. So, and I do know that the refill for this kit, I believe, posted in the online store today. So, um, okay. So with, with all of that, let's just get on with it already. So this first little um, area will tell you what you need for each card, which I already assembled. So we can now start our very first card. And this is a cool little kit. Okay, it comes with this glitter glue. Um, full disclosure, I'm one of the very few paper crafters that doesn't do glitter. Um, but it is in a glue, so I'm assuming it's kind of Wink of Stella-ish. We're gonna give it a whirl. Um, the Stamper Man is not home. He's He really hates glitter. Um, so if need be, I will clean up before he gets home. <laughs> okay, so the first one we are doing is this one. And also, don't you love that the paper pumpkin kits, when they're cards, they come with coordinating envelopes. So like how cool are you going to look sending this stuff out for Christmas, right? Love it. Um, I think they have dedicated uh, like eight of the 12 kits per year to be um, card kits because they seem to be the most popular. But next month we're going to have treat boxes with food safe bags and everything. And the cool thing is um, the treat boxes next month are gonna coordinate with the cards that we made this month. So, very cool. So this card base is already pre-printed for you and it's pre-scored. So you just kind of score it. I do like to use my bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you could always use your acrylic block to give that a good crease, okay? Let's see, you don't need tools, right? You just need your paper pumpkin kit. And then as you get more stuff and learn more things, you can say, oh, I need a bone folder or I need to take your pick tool or I really like that real red. Let me get the full size ink pad. So um, that is my, my suggestion to you. Okay, so what they're telling us to do here is, ooh, see, and they even include a full sheet of dimensionals. Like they usually give you more adhesive than you need. I love that. And the instructions will tell you where to put dimensionals 
And then they've also got glue dots. And so these little dots are glue dots. So it'll kind of guide you all through everything. So we've got this cool cutout of Christmas houses. It's like the Christmas village. Do any of you collect the Christmas villages? I kind of always wanted to, but um, I have a problem with the, where does the rest of my stuff go when I bring Christmas stuff out? You know, um, I'm just not that organized. I, I really want to be, I really, really want to be. <laughs> So it's telling me to put a whole lot more dimensionals than I am on here. Go with your gut. But dimensionals, I mean, they're part of the kit and they give you plenty. So they will always give you at least how many they're telling you to put on. So you don't need to worry about running out, which is awesome. Dimensionals are another thing that's a great um, addition to any time you're ordering. Uh, if you're running low on them or if you don't have any at all, they are fabulous to have in your craft stash. So this one's going to go even with the bottom of the card. And when I have a piece like this that's all the way across, I usually like to stand my card up and stand this up and then kind of marry them, if you will. So there we go. So it's got all that cool dimension. It already looks like a little Christmas village. Love it. Okay. And then we have three die cut tree elements so that's a double tree a double tree i love staying at the double tree because they have those warm chocolate chip cookies oh my gosh sorry real squirrel there but seriously love their chocolate chip cookies <laughs> okay what do we got penny you went to rudolph's village it goes under the tree with the polar express train i love that a little rudolph's village well, that's too cute. We haven't done a train in I don't know how long. We always had a train under around our tree when I was growing up as well. My dad was a big train guy and I love trains as well. I mostly like riding on trains. Oh my gosh. I just love it so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm quite the nut for them. Okay, so we are also going to put these guys up on dimensionals. So it's saying this one only needs one in the middle. This guy needs a couple. Okay, so we have a tall one with a star. And that is going to go smack dab in the middle, of course, for all the who's and whoville to come around and sing, right? Big Grinch fan too. I, I guess I really love Christmas more than I even realized I did. <laughs> Dad had a train under the tree. Oh, you're giving it to Jackson this Christmas. Oh, Betty, I love that. That is perfect. It's so nice to be able to pass on things like that. Okay. So we've got all of our little pieces. Now we need to stamp our greeting and they've given us pre-punched, you know, pre-die cut little flag and things here. <laughs> Isn't it so nice that I call everything by its technical name? <laughs> so we open up our little stampin' spot and I need my, Anybody see where I, there it is, my, where I put my stamp set. <laughs> so these are always fun for me too, these, um, the Christmas time ones, because I'm always looking at, since I make my own Christmas cards, I'm always looking for a good Merry Christmas, a good Happy Holidays and whatnot to um, put on my other Christmas cards that I make as well. So, because I will send out some of these, but then I'll also send out some that um, I just make up. I should say that we make up because the Stamper Man helps make Christmas cards as well. All right, I'm actually gonna stamp this on my grid paper first because this is a brand new stamp set. Oh, it stamps really well. So sometimes there's a little bit of that film kind of left on it from the manufacturing process. So sometimes you want to ink it up, stamp it on scrap paper, and then if it's not real clear, give it a, a scrub on the Stampin' Chamois or your Stampin' Scrub or maybe with a baby wipe and um, get all that film off and then re-ink it again. Okay, 
So we've got our happy holidays. Hoping I get this right on because my camp, my phone is kind of in my way. Oh, perfect. Love it. All right, grab our chamois, clean that off. I opened up my chamois case tonight and there was a dead earwig in there and I was not happy about that, but I was happy that it was dead. <laughs> so there's that. All righty. So we've got our greeting and then they've included this fun glimmer paper, like super shiny. It's like a red carpet dress on paper, <laughs> which is what Christmas should be, right? Like a red carpet, carpet dress. Okay, so they're telling me to put this one up on dimensionals. See, they've got it right here. So they're saying this one on dimensionals and then on the back of this, we're just gonna put glue dots and it's gonna sit flat on the card. So a couple dimensionals for our greeting which is probably good because the glimmer paper, it's kind of hard to stick to and dimensionals have a bigger sticky area and they're kind of hardier adhesive. So that should stick pretty well to that. Yeah, not a big earwig fan as well, but you know, like I said, at least dead. A live spider in your chamois case. No, that is not okay. A live spider anywhere is not okay. Blech. We had a ginormous spider hanging out outside of our um, sliding door, I don't know, about a month ago. Like literally, um, Russ was gone. Maybe he was shopping or something because I don't think he was traveling. He was just not home at the moment. And um, I like went to let the dogs out and I kind of saw something out of the corner of my eye. And the darn thing had made this elaborate web from like the gutters all the way down. I mean, it was pretty darn impressive, but still, ew. And then it was a pretty good, it was like an inch or more big spider, like with the legs, but still, I was not a fan. And I basically said, the dogs are staying outside until somebody gets home to take care of that. Because <laughs> I was not opening the door again. <laughs> that was the end of it. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to wait to do the final step because it happens on both cards. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Penny has a live spider in her chamois case, and this is what happens. MacGyver is her husband's nickname, by the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Screamed bloody murder, which reminds me of... I. For a few months when Russ and I were first dating, basically, um, I lived with his parents until I got an apartment. And um, there was one time that we were, he was not home. My father-in-law was home. I was there. And um, I was in the living room by myself, I guess. And there was a spider and I screamed bloody murder. And he came running in thinking I had fallen. I was bleeding from the head, all sorts of like terrible ideas. And um, he comes in and I'm basically crouched in the corner of the couch going, there's a spider. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Thank God that man loved me. Because, <laughs> oh boy, if there's a spider, I'm a handful. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. Let's pop this other one together. Again, same envelopes for all of them. So very cool. And then we have another pre-printed card base that's already scored. Let's do that cool trick with the uh, block. I'm like, what is that thing called? <laughs> okay, so this one has some other cool little elements. All right. And these are hmm, both going on dimensionals. Okay. So the red house which totally is where I would live because I love red. Oh, Betty, yeah, Russ doesn't do the snakes either. I will say I'm not fond of snakes, um, but you know, we really don't get a lot of them. I haven't seen a lot of snakes in my life aside from like at the zoo. Um, 
So I guess that's why I'm not like as freaked out because it's just like spiders are just everywhere my whole life and I'm really over it. <laughs> All righty, so that one's going to have, I'm actually putting the dimensionals in, dimensionals in exactly the spots they're telling me this time, because these are going to get layered on top of each other. I'm kind of assuming they spaced them out. Yeah, okay. So it's going to go flush with the bottom again. So I'm going to put that down at the bottom. I'm going to put that right up next to it. And wow, they're married. <laughs> Okay, and then we have this other. Oh, I do love this little house too. Pretty cute. All right. So quite a few dimensionals on this guy as well. I, you know, I don't know. I was hoping that they wouldn't hit each other if I put them exactly where they told me. Because I don't like to double stack my dimensionals. But that's the only, um, oh my gosh, the only thing that's puffed up on these cards. There's no like gems or anything like that. Way too many legs. <laughs> yes, and snakes have no legs. I will agree. The way too many legs is I think the thing that freaks me out the most. And yes, snakes do slither and I'm not a fan. But those way too many legs are the things that I just, mm, no, mm, no, no, no. <laughs> Clearly not a fan. Okay. Now let's grab our Merry Christmas for this one. And I don't know if you all noticed, but even when I have clear stamps and I can see through them, I tend to line them up with my grid paper. And then I make sure that my block is lined up too. So I know that everything's kind of straight. It's just easier, right? It's, it's easier to kind of tell what you're doing. All right. This is a different stamp. So I am again going to put it on the grid paper first. Ooh, perfect. These are good stamps, you guys. I'm telling you. You're going to see a lot of these uh, greetings on my other Christmas cards, I think. <laughs> We do tend to, so because I'm a business demonstrator, so I am not in it just for the discount, which many, many people are, and nothing wrong with that. Um, but because I'm a business demonstrator, I tend to not use retired stamps at all. Oh, <laughs> no M&Ms lately. Um, because M&Ms make Manor a bigger girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no self-control. So it is nice um, whenever I do in-person events, I still like to have M&Ms on hand because they melt in your mouth, not in your hands. So they don't get chocolate mess all over your cards, right? So I do still do that. And then it's a nice excuse for me to have M&Ms in the house and then I snack on them. But I can't have them in the house all the time because I will just eat them all. I can't stop. I have no self-control. So it's a me issue for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, so I was saying, because I'm, I'm a business demonstrator, I don't tend to use retired product because I can't sell it. So, you know, whatever. So it just kind of, when it retires, it retires from me too. But we do tend to keep around retired um, old like Christmas sets because we make a lot of Christmas cards. We make anywhere from like 60 to 100 maybe um, each year. And so we want to have um, different greeting options because you never know, like this, the spacing might not be right. It might not be big enough or it might be too big or whatever. So you need a lot of options. <laughs> we just need a lot of options, people. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things we do keep that's retired. And another thing that we now keep that's retired is um, like the old transportation set that had the helicopter and the train and the cars and stuff because the boys absolutely love to stamp with that. Um, we had the Wildcats set that retired, I think, last year that had like tigers and 
leopards in it and the boys love that one as well. So we definitely keep those around um, for those purposes. Okay. Drum roll, please. It is time for the glitter glue. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I will say too, um, I realized the other day, um, I don't know if anybody else out there in Facebook land is like me and loves to start a project and um, does not finish a project. And I'm not talking to anybody in, in particular because this is me that does this. Um, I have many, I actually have a cross-stitched uh, piece I think I finally finished it, but literally it was many, many years in the making. It was a row of Victorian houses and I kept picking it up and putting it down. And mostly I got the houses done, but the thing about Victorian houses is they have a lot of detail. And so there was a lot of that little back stitching and little French knots and whatnot for the iron gates and all the little detail work along the roof lines and holy moly so i would pick it up and i would finish a little bit and then i would put it away and then like months later i would come across it and go i should finish this and i would do a little more and then i would get tired <laughs> so, um i know penny i knew you thought you would think i was picking on you but honestly it's me i'm the problem it's me <laughs> but um yeah i'm i'm definitely a starter i'm not always a finisher um I have a quilt top that I made one year. Um, and I was I was hyper focused on this thing. I was like gonna get it right. The the middle is um, I can't remember what it's called, it's a star pattern, but um I tore I like ripped out the seams and redid it like four or five times before I got those points lined up correctly and called my mom to ask her you know things and stuff um that quilt top has been done for i don't know a decade or so and um i have not quilted it or bound it or backed it because i'm terrified of the next step so it sits in a box somewhere <laughs> all right i put my instructions away i don't know why i did that i'm terrified of this glitter glue you guys <laughs> I'm just, I just need a little emotional support from my people while we're doing this. So basically it wants me to outline each of the roof lines. So it's showing you kind of in, if you see the roof lines up here, they're nice and pretty and white. And then down here, they've got like a gray outline and that's where it wants you to put the glitter glue. All right, so just every roof line, let's just line every roof with glitter glue. Glitter therapy, yeah, no. We don't do glitter therapy in this house. I'm also a little terrified that it's gonna come splodging out. So let's see how quickly it flows first. Okay, not bad. That is controllable, it feels like. There we go. Well, that's gonna look really cool when it's dry. Just a little added shimmer and dimension. Be pretty cool. As I said, it's a good thing the Stamper Man's not home, but it is like it's gluey, so should be fine. Shouldn't flake all over the place. I'm actually more worried about this glimmer paper. <laughs> the the glimmer paper that we've had in the past, I've noticed that the different colors, like the reds and stuff, it they don't flake, but the silver usually does. So. We'll see. I don't think he's going to be addressing or stuffing envelopes with these particular cards. Okay. So that doesn't even take long. Like you could get these all assembled and then just do this glitter glue part, like, you know, while you're watching a show or waiting for dinner to cook. Yes, I cooked dinner tonight. <laughs> Ah, there he is. <laughs> it's okay, honey. You're miles and miles away. <laughs> Although it is very much like the Winky Stella. It stays put, so it's not bad at all.
there we go. Some pretty sparkly roof lines. I love it. <laughs> Not even, it's exactly. I think, I don't, I don't know when the last time I told this story was, but, you know, over 20 years ago, um, I decided I wanted to sign up to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I had already done direct sales with other, another company. And so he knew what the deal was with that. That wasn't a problem. But uh, I said, I want to sign up and, and do Stampin' Up! And he just looked at me and said, do you have to use glitter? And I said, no. And he goes, all right. <laughs> didn't care how much the kit cost. Didn't care how many parties I wanted to do. He just did not want glitter in his house. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank you very much, Petty, for metaphorically holding my hand. <laughs> it is good though. I think, Russ, I think even you use the glitter glue. It's it's like I said, it's just like Wink Estella, except it's thick. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So there are our beautiful Christmas cards that we've made with this kit. And um so there are two ways to sign up for Paper Pumpkin um, if you have not already. So you can do a monthly subscription, which is just a an auto pay on your credit or debit card. And that link, I believe I have put in the description, but it is here as well. And or if you want to order prepaid, you can order them in one month, three month, six month or 12 month lots. The six month and 12 month um, prepaid subscriptions do actually come with a bit of a discount. So that's good. You can also earn Stampin' Rewards with that. Uh, those are purchased just like any other product in my regular store, which there is a link in the description as well for that. Um, so if you have other products you want to order, maybe you want to get the bone folder or the take pick tool or whatever, that kind of stuff, um, then you can Go ahead and just order some prepaid subscriptions, excuse me, and um, tag those other things on with your order and build up to some nice reward points if you want. Um, was Kylie a glitter girl? I don't think she really was. I do remember taking her to, oh, was it Libby Lou? Is that the name of the place in the mall? Uh, when she, for her 13th birthday, I took like her and like seven of her friends um to Libby Lou and they got these makeovers and they did they caked on this like glitter lipstick stuff oh my gosh I it made me sick just to look at it not even because of the glitter so much but just because of the feel like I could I didn't even have it on and I could feel it I'm like ew no <laughs> So I think that was kind of the extent. I will also say that I purposely did not dress her in pink or anything. I was not a pink girl myself. Um, I like pink fine. I don't dislike pink, but I don't like the idea. I didn't like the idea of like dressing my girl in pink because she was a girl. I'm, I'm a rebel. So <laughs> she did have some pink things because she got a lot of hand-me-downs from her cousin. And there was a lot of pink stuff, but when it was my turn to buy things, I tended to not. And in fact, when I bought um, for my sister's baby shower, when she was having her, as we found out later, little girl, um, I bought a red Mickey Mouse sleeper for her because red's my favorite color. And I'm like, doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl, you can wear red. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely a rebel in that department. She's a girly girl, though. She certainly does like it. And she has um, one niece. And she loves buying presents for Violet because Violet is all about purple and pink. She is a true girly girl. She loves unicorns and glitter and ponies and the whole thing. And yeah, Kylie loves buying stuff for Violet. So, <laughs> all right. I also wanted to show you a little something. Um, so let's talk about next month's kit, which is called Warm Wishes. And it is going to be eight, um, I told you, like treat boxes, with, which will coordinate with this month's kit. So it'll have the very same kind of look as these cards. And then uh, they'll have food safe bags as well. So you can fill them with, 
you know, cookies or stuff like that. If you've, if you've made, you know, homemade treats, that type of thing, um, you'll still get a, a stamp set and an ink spot and all that kind of stuff. That'll have eight boxes in there. And the other thing that um, you can get and that I did get is there is an add on for these cards and envelopes. So the envelopes are all the same. How cool is that, that they've got that address kind of part, you know, and then the striped red, love that. So um, you get 20 card bases and 20 envelopes and oh my gosh, honey, I apologize right now. I did not realize these would be covered in glitter in the bottom. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> So, but these card bases are all pre-printed, pre-scored. They are larger, so that's nice, but you can tell that they do coordinate with these as well. So you can use that stamp set from this kit and the stamp set probably from next month's kit to make some additional cards to go with these. So really, really fun little add-on. I believe, yeah, these are all the same. So, awesome. So that is something else as a paper pumpkin subscriber occasionally they will have little add-on things like this um, and these cards and envelopes are not available if you are not a subscriber so some extra perks for you uh let's do this so i can chat with y'all olivia's a pink and purple and unicorns right how could you not be i guess <laughs> so um the other thing I wanted to make sure that you, oh, this is where I was going with the starting and stopping. We got off track, I think because Russ started screaming about the glitter. <laughs> it's gonna blame you, honey. Um, but no, so I tend to start and stop things. I get very excited. Oh, this is gonna be the thing. I'm gonna do this. I did cross stitch for many years, I will say. But, um, you know, I had, I was, I got a new sewing machine many years ago and I was just gonna sew all these things. and. You know, I think I've hemmed a skirt with it. So um, <laughs> it's just kind of what happens in my house. But I realized the other day, I've been stamping for over 20 years. It's been, it'll be 22 years in March that I've been like actually stamping, 21 years as a demonstrator. So this is just one of those hobbies that has just stuck with me. And I think part of the reason is that um, it's so easy. You can, you can do it at an entry level. You can get better and be kind of medium. You can get really crazy and go over the top and you can stay at any one of those levels or you can, you know, like I can, I can go over the top once for maybe somebody, you know, like Kylie, for instance, one, one year, um, I went just over the top and made a Parisian awning card for her, for her birthday. So, um, and it was pink and gray. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, you can go over the top for an all for a, a specific occasion, a wedding card, something like that. Or you can stay simple or you can be over the top and then go simple to, because you have to make multiples of something. So there's just kind of something for everybody with it, I think. Um, and you can make 3D things like boxes and bags and treat containers and things. You can do scrapbooking with all of these supplies, um, memory keeping, you can do home decor items. There's just so many different options that I feel like you never get bored. You're, you're like, there's always something different to try or something new to go, oh, look what I made, you know, and or there's a new color or there's a kit that's, you know, whatever it is. So there's kind of always something there to keep me interested for over 20 years. That's really, really long time. <laughs> so um, so I would love to have you join me in this hobby, whether it's um, being a happy customer or if it's joining the Steampunk Stamper team like Betty and Penny both did. Um, they are a couple of my discount divas. They are in it for the discount and to get their crafting on, and that's awesome. Um, and if you want to join me and build a business like I do, I'm happy to help you with that as well. Remember that we have our awesome starter kit promotion going on right now um, through the end of October. So that is a week from tomorrow. So the 31st is the last day. Halloween. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> So you can either get 35%, yeah, 35% off the starter kit, which means 
you would get $125 in product and only pay $64.35 plus tax. You always get free shipping on the starter kit, no matter what time of year you join. Um, there's no obligation to sell. You get a free paper pumpkin kit in there as well. You get to pick out whatever products you want in your kit. It's fabulous. And right now, this month, you also get a free registration to our virtual event on November 11th. And I'm very excited to get together with my team for that. Um, the other option you have is you can get 35% more product. So you can pay the regular $99 price and get $168.75 in product. So that's pretty amazing as well. Absolutely love that. Um, so if you have any questions about that, um, please just pop me a um, private message or shoot it in the comments or send me an email at stambernan at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. As I said, there's no obligation to either sign up or to do anything if you do sign up. So i um, happy to answer any questions, but I literally wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you how to get the best deal on your craft stuff, right? So um, that is what I am here from. Yes, and it's so fun getting a card, right? I can't tell you, like, I know it's a, it's a rush when you go to the mailbox and you get that handmade card and you're like, oh, so exciting. And, um, but I tell you, as somebody who makes and sends cards, it's really exciting for me when somebody then messages me and says, oh my gosh, thanks for the card. It's so pretty, whatever, you know, it's, it's like, it gives me a, a little dopamine hit for making somebody else's day. So don't you want to do that too? Like seriously. <laughs> you oh yay you got some lovely birthday cards today penny's birthday was yesterday happy birthday i knew a lot of people that had birthdays yesterday i mean i know you and christy do i know that but man there was a lot of my facebook was blowing up with birthdays yesterday so all righty okay i have rambled on for a while tonight we've had a blast i'm so glad you guys joined me so if you learned a little something new today, or if there's something that you want to remember, save this video and also share it so that your friends and family can also be, you know, benefit from that extra knowledge and those extra little tips. All right. All New Year's babies. Yep. <laughs> All right. That's it for me. Until next week, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping.